Yeah, first of all, thanks a lot for being invited here to speak. At first I thought, well, on Friday afternoon, a session on data, let's see how many people are around. And actually I see that quite, quite a few people still stick to be here. Um, so it seems to be an interesting topic. Um, as a way of background, um, I'm a banker by training, so I'm not a data native, so to speak. But I've uh, historically always thought about what the economic relevance of data is. Um, and so I basically joined a team of, um, of uh, deep learning specialists about four years ago, actually just across the street. So I know this building actually for quite some time and it has recently been renovated. And I, I actually have been walking through this building uh, just about uh, 12 months ago, trying to actually get some space in here, but obviously they made something much nicer out of it. Um, but just across the street, basically, there's the DFKI, the German Center for Artificial Intelligence, um, and we've been, we've been working with the team of Hans Uskoreit, who was a speaker, I think, yesterday. And um, basically, we were uh, identifying that uh, deep learning technologies already four or five years ago, uh, when um, teams of Schmidt, Huber, and Switzerland and equivalent basically made the first impressions that deep learning algorithms truly have an outperforming uh, kind of performance. Uh, we thought about uh, what kind of economic applications you could drive out of it. And uh, basically what we did is that we thought about where does all the data sit within large corporates. And uh, we identified that within a document, for instance, such as a lease or a credit document uh, or equivalent, there's a lot of data in there that's economically re relevant to the actions that an organization takes. Um, and if you look at it, you have invoices, you have contracts, you have leases, you have annual reports, and most of the actions that anyone takes, so think of you, you probably have an employment contract, you have an insurance contract, uh, organizations have articles of incorporation, and uh, very different types of documents. However, you don't know where the data is coming from. So that data, in most instances, is completely unstructured. And that, if I tell that story to lawyers, usually they get a very mean face. But uh, it is actually a fact that in a 500-page uh, uh, credit documentation, you don't know where a change of control is drafted, or where, for instance, a covenant structure is. Um, or, for instance, in a lease, where is your termination right or equivalent, um, other than reading the document. And um, what we basically said is that we are trying to apply uh, the deep learning algorithms at a time in order to make out of unstructured information, structured information. So we have been applying our technologies against um, identifying information out of documents, so for us, a document is nothing else than the deposition of historical management decisions in form of pictures that are legally binding. It's a very theoretical thought. Uh, think of it, the deposition of historical management decisions in form of pictures. But uh, it's basically a document that sits in DMS solutions in large corporates. And this is actually the legally binding deposition of that fact. And any action that an organization takes is basically based upon that kind of unstructured information that sits in such documents. And uh, what we've basically built is that uh, we've built a platform um, uh, where we apply our deep learning algorithms in order to do our own, own optical character recognition that is truly outperforming existing players, um, as well as basically then doing text extraction out of those documents in order to um, extract that information such as landlord, tenant, and equivalent in order to push that into a front end and then visualizing that information to large corporates. Now, normally, uh, when we basically launched our product, we identified that uh, one or the other services are like a law firm or um, a large uh, accountancy or equivalent uh, servicing organizations said, well, now you are accelerating our work. And that's truly a fact. So we we do, uh, when uh, law firms or accountancy firms basically process large volumes of data or documents in order to abstract information that's legally binding and meaningful to that organization, um, we basically help them to accelerate that process with our algorithms and our platform um, in order to make uh, the data available to clients. Um, however, what we've, been, we, what we've been doing is 
that we allow organizations to actually capture that information in-house so they can, in effect, onboard external individuals in order to create data that is structured, meaningful, and useful for future purposes. And what we're doing here is that uh, we allow organizations to not only deposition their historical management decisions in form of pictures in document management solutions, we even allow them to actually rip those documents apart, make structured data out of it, pledge that into information, and then hammer that into uh, ERP solutions such as, such as SAP and equivalent in order to make that information available in large um, systems and at the same time allowing them for any future value, value, value generating purpose to allow them to back solve and go to the relevant section of those documents in order to, 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 to read it out there. And what that means is that we basically, um, if you look at the life cycle of a document such as a lease or a credit document, you usually have a start where lots of people are involved. So let's look, look at it. When a document gets drafted, you always have a lawyer, you have advisors looking around that. And when an event happens, such as a, a prolongation of a credit, uh, or if you have an amendment to, an, uh, to, a, to, to, a, to a lease, an equivalent, you always have different parties looking after the documentation and trying to dig out specific information that they require to consume at any specific point in time. Now, what happens with us is basically, if you want to abstract the lease, we use these AI, so the um, deep learning uh, technology, in order to semi-automate the data extraction and to create structured data that is then consumable for any future, for, for any future point in time. So what we are doing there is that we basically reach out to organizations, to investors, but also to some uh, one of the other law firm uh, saying that if you basically process the documentation within our system, it's similar like creating an intangible asset. So if you look after a company like Coca-Cola, they do have a brand, and that brand is recognized. So if you, if you go to, a, to a, even a stand in the other room and you would have some water with sugar, you wouldn't pay any money for it. If you have sugar with water and it's Coca-Cola on that, you probably pay money for that. And that's due to the fact that they own a brand. So what we are saying at the same time is that organizations who basically have structured information available, not even as being depositioned in historical management decisions in form of pictures, so in documents, but actually structured information that is directly pledged to ERP solution that is creating an intangible asset for that organization that you may want to balance actually on the balance sheet in, at some future point in time. And this is here actually what, what, all our, what our organization does. So we've been, we've, been, we've been doing that for actually now almost uh, four years. So we've been, we've been kind of an early mover in that field. Um, we have been focusing on one vertical, which is real estate, and we are now basically tabbing other markets. Uh, one additional advantage I think that um, also many people need to understand is if you have information that's structured within documents, um, it's not always required to be in text format. If you break it down into attributes, it's basically consumable in all other languages. And with that, you can actually have a multi-jurisdictional portfolio from large corporates um, out of Japan, out of China, out of India, out of the US, and basically bring that all down into one core of structured data, which you then can consume in any language that you require it to be in. And that makes actually the information quite powerful because you can actually consolidate information from global corporates into one language and can consume it at any point in time in the way you want, want it to be, as well as also in the language you want it to have. And what we are actually at the moment doing and what our organizational challenge is at the moment is that we are going to a lot of large corporates and a lot of large servicing firms and telling them the way you basically consume and process data needs to happen to change. Many of these organizations, in fact, have set up very, very efficient processes in order to get documents into structured data that's going through one, two, three steps. So the first is translation, the second is then uh, uh, consumption in a two-page format, then putting it into a database, and then you're feeding it into the ERP solution. And we say from A to B, it's one step. 
because you can already semi-automate the process in document abstraction and feed that straight in the language you require to be in into the ERP solution. And that actually tells them that they have to completely restructure in-house. They have to kind of uh, take one business unit, break it apart, and then recompose it in order to feed it to other business units. And uh, that is an organizational challenge that, that we are facing at the moment very much. Um, but it seems to, to get relatively good comfort. Um, yeah, and we're a Berlin-based company. We were originally found across the street, so to speak. Um, we have now around about 60 people on the ground uh, in Berlin, London, and New York. Um, we're still growing, um, and we'll continue to do so. And um, I'm happy to take any questions that you may have.